Hi everyone and welcome to Down the Rabbit Hole to Floating Point Wonderland, my third screencast. I'm Kelly Vaughn and this afternoon after watching Scott's video I took a trip down a rabbit hole. Um, I had some questions about what he did and I spent hours trying to figure them out doing some research and at the bottom of the rabbit hole I met some really strange characters so I thought I'd share the trip that I went on with you. Let's begin at the beginning. This was the function that Scott presented and his tests, and it seems straightforward. You take a value, you cut off the integer portion and uh, define dollars with that. You define, define cents as your original value minus that integer portion of it, which should leave you with the fractional part. You multiply that by 100 and again convert it to an integer, and that gives you the cents, and then you can print the whole thing. So he kind of skipped over the tests, but I wanted to see if I could understand what was producing them so that I could avoid these types of mistakes more effectively. So I looked at the first test that um, got really confusing, and it was this one, 12.20. And I thought about it and I said, okay, so the integer part of that is 12, and 12.20 minus 12 should give us 0.20 times 100 is 20, which is a really clear integer. How could there be a problem? But yet, you see it printed 19 cents. So what is going on? And then I had some questions here that I also couldn't answer, but we'll come to those later. So let's remind ourselves a bit about base 10 place value, which we use every day. We have the ones, the tens, the hundreds, the thousands, the ten thousands, and that is equivalent to 10 raised to the 0 power, to the first power, to the second power, and so on. In our fractional area, we have the 1 tenths, 10 to the negative 1, the 1 one hundredths, 10 to the negative 2, and so on. So here are some examples, but let's look at just one, 15.62. That's one set of 10, plus five sets of 1, or 15, 6 tenths, and two hundredths, and this is how we represent it. So far, so good. But the computer is not using base 10. That's what you enter, and it's what it will eventually report back to you, but it does some other, uh, one could say magic, but it's not magic, um, in between. So the, you have to remember that the computer is thinking in binary, which is base two. So it has the same basic idea, but instead of 10 here as the base raised to the zero power or raised to the first power or the second power, it's two. So two to the zero gives us the ones category. Two to the first is the twos. Two to the second is the fours. Two to the third is the eights and so on. We'll talk about this section later. So a number like five is one set of four and one set of one. There are no twos, so we put a little placeholder zero, so four plus one is five, and the binary number would look like this. Twelve is an eight plus a four, with, and that's the whole thing, and then two placeholder zeros, one, one, zero, zero. And you can take a look at 30 and 31 on your own if you need a little more of a refresher. All right, so far so good. But what about those fractional values? I'd never really given that any thought, be careful when looking at this because I've hidden some columns, so 30 and 31 and even 12, actually all of them are incorrectly shown here, but that's because there's columns missing. Um, so let's focus on 0 0.5. All right, well we have no ones, but conveniently enough, 0.5 is the same as 1 half, so we can put a 1 in this column and we're done. That's pretty simple. 0 0.1 would be the equivalent in binary of 0 0.5 in decimal. 0 0.25, well, no ones, no one halves, but check it out, one one fourth. Perfect, we're done. 0.75 is a one half and a one fourth added together. So we're adding these two things to get 0.75, right? And we represent that as 0.11. 0 0.625 is a one half, zero one fourths, and one one eighth. And this is our binary number. All right. This is making sense. 
but it can get pretty confusing pretty quickly and produce some unexpected results. Let's take a look at the 0 0.2 from Scott's number, 12.20. Okay, so this is 2 tenths. It's a nice, you know, decimal. It cuts off at a certain point. It doesn't go on forever. So shouldn't it do the same in binary? Well, let's take a look. We have no ones. It's less than one half. It's less than one fourth. Oh, okay, we can fit an eighth in there. So let's take one of those. And notice we're working from the bigger end to the smaller end. So I put this in our running total. Well, 1 16th, I put that in a running total and it uh, was still less than 0.2. I tried putting a 1 32nd in there, but it came out too high, so I put in a zero. And now, if you take a look, when we add a 1 1 1 64th, um, these are really hard to pronounce, you'll see that it goes over. Okay, so that would be a zero, right? Because we're above 0.2 by a pretty meaningful amount, so we need to look for something smaller to add so that we can get closer to the exact value of 0 0.2. So this is looking kind of tricky. And I found a converter so they wouldn't have to figure this out one, does one uh, place value at a time. So I put in our 0 0.2, and it looks like it's a, based on this infinity here and what you see up here, it's never going to stop. Looks like it goes on, you know, infinitely. So 0.2, our nice, you know, easily written number in the decimal system turns into an infinitely long sequence in the binary system. Um, one thing to be aware of is that you know, you, you can, with this converter, decide how many bits you want to see, and each zero or one is one bit. It comes from the words binary digit, so that's pretty interesting. Um, all right, so when you see this, you can totally understand what's going on with that first example, because it's not subtracting a nice neat point two, it's subtracting a much more messy binary version of it, and that has to get cut off somewhere, and as a result, there's a rounding error. So you can piece together how this could possibly come out to 19. All right, feeling pretty good. So let's take a look at one of the other ones that was bothering me, 12.01. All right, so over here, the dollar value is the integer, which is 12, which is this in binary. And then we say, okay, so 12.01 is that in binary. So here, taking this little section of the code, it's 100 times 12.01 minus 12, and we wind up with this. Hmm. Okay. So if we were to use the convert to integer function and just cut it off here, it's pretty clear how you'd get your zeros. Great. Problem solved, right? It printed... Um, $12.00, which wasn't what we were expecting since we knew we had one cent, but this seems to explain why. All right, so what about this one, 1.01? In Scott's example, this gave us one cent. Is there a reason why it should come out differently when the number of cents is the same? One the integer is 1 in binary. 1.01 gives you this in binary. Do the subtraction and multiply by 100. It looks to me like we should still get our 0 cents report. What is going on? This is where the rabbit hole really started to feel like a rabbit hole. So from here on out, there's a bit of speculation based on a lot of internet research, and if anyone understands this better than I do or can clarify anything, please let me know and I'll make an updated version um, and give you credit for helping me out. But this is what I pieced together. It turns out that binary is closer to what the computer actually thinks in, but it's not exactly right. And the reason is that it has to use ones and zeros to represent all kinds of different information, not just numbers, right? Like for the letter capital A, there's some sort of binary representation of that. Um, and you can't mix that up with some number. So there needs to be a way to encode numbers that isn't just all the numbers in their binary form. 
because then you'd constantly be tripping other symbols codes, right? So, and I'll let you know about a video that explains that um, even more clearly. So I found another converter, and this one shows you this system here, um, which probably makes no sense to you, but you can look up IEEE 754. Um, and what it is, is it appears to be how the computer actually expresses a lot of different numbers without having to use the exact binary encoding of those numbers. So it, it sort of comes up with a different way of representing them. And it still, you know, uses the ones and zeros to represent it, but it puts numbers together in a different way. Um, on the next slide, there's a link to a video that expresses this and explains this in just the most crystal clear way you could ever imagine. So go look at that. I'm not going to try to do it here. But I think that this is what causes our strange 12.01, 1.01 problem. And all that this particular converter allowed me to do was to check. So I put in 12.01 and you see that it went to this system and then it said the most accurate representation um, and it changed kind of where the decimal point is as a kind of artifact of using this system. But you can see the 12 and then it's 0099. So you can imagine if you truncated it here, you'd get your zero, um, just like it did in Python. And then I put in 1.01 .01, and again it used this method and then came out with 1.01 .01 as the most accurate representation and that would give us our one cent and that appears to be consistent. So again I'm not going to try to reproduce what's in this video. It's a Stanford professor lecturing. Watch the beginning. If you feel like you're in the groove, skip to minute maybe 36, 37-ish and he gives just like a remarkable explanation of this. It's really cool. I, I recommend you take a look. Um, but this was kind of my conclusion. Um, I can understand how numbers work well enough to see that no computer can ever capture all the precision within a long decimal number, right? There's ones like pi where you, you can't possibly capture the whole thing because it never stops. So some cutoffs have to be made. And so we're all kind of mad here, right? But there's different systems of expressing numbers with different levels of precision. And by trying to understand them, you can at least, you know, be uh, mad surrounded by people who are mad in the same way. Um, and I also thought, you know, you wouldn't have come to take this class if you weren't willing to engage with some stuff that was new and strange and maybe a little crazy. And now, because that is really intense and confusing and fascinating, let's all have some tea. Have a wonderful week, everyone. Good luck with your mini projects. Thanks so much.